Hello, children. It's your lowly prince. Okay, uh, we're going to talk some more about our heritage. All right, my children? More about our heritage. Some, something that I found here. It says, I love Highlanders and I love Lowlanders, but when I came to that branch of our race that has been grafted onto the Ulster stem, I take off my hat in veneration and awe. Lord Roseberry. <clears throat> Let us begin by asking a simple question Who are the Scots Irish? Simple questions very rarely have simple answers, and the answer to this one is more complex than most. Much depends, moreover, on where in the world is this posed. In Britain, the term is virtually unknown, and most people would assume that it meant some kind of hybridization between the Irish and the Scots. <clears throat> Only the Protestant communities of Northern Ireland would generally recognize what it is meant though very few would now accept the designation for themselves, preferring to be described as British or Ulsterman. Only in North America, where the term was invented, would one be likely to encounter an immediate recognition, but even here there are problems. Many of the descendants of the original Scots-Irish settlers would happily wear kilts and tartan on commemorative days, though this would have been a shock to their ancestors who took particularly, particular trouble to distance themselves from all things Celtic and Gaelic. The task of this article is to attempt what is always a dangerous endeavor, the separation of myth and reality, and thus uncover the roots of one of the most remarkable branches of the Scottish and Irish race. The story begins with an ending. In March 1603, the same month that James, blah, blah, I don't know what that means, of Scotland began James I of England and Ireland, the earls of Tyr, Tyr Rhone and Tyr Canal, chiefs of the O'Neills and O'Donnells, okay, that's me. Okay, we were the Lords of Tyrconnell. I already said that. The leading families of the ancient province of Ulster surrendered to the English. Thus concluded the Nine Years' War, the latest in a long line of struggles to arrest the steady expansion of English power in Ireland. Okay, that's, remember I said, English are undercover Jew scourge, okay, under... That's what they are, okay? <clears throat> okay, and they've been chasing us around, trying to kill us since day one, stealing all our shit, and digging up all our relics. Okay, that's what they did since day one, and that's what they're still doing, right to this very day, right to this very second. That's what they're doing. Okay? For all you great, smart people of the world, I think you know everything. Okay, it was in Ulster and Gaelic, Celtic Ireland, that had made its last stand against a foreign invader, all the more unwelcome because he now came garbed in a cloak of militant Protestantism, a direct challenge to our ancient Catholic tradition. It had been a particularly bitter struggle, and Ulster had been devastated. The northeastern counties of Antrim and Down, within sight of the coast of Scotland, are described by contemporary writers as all waste. See? You know... For James, the conclusion of the Nine Years' War came as a welcome addition to his new glories. It also presented him with a problem and an opportunity. As a man and a king, he was no more sympathetic to Gaelic traditions and culture than his Tudor predecessors on the English throne. While still King of Scots, he had been preoccupied with problems posed by his own minorities in the Highlands and Islands, whom he once described as utterly barbarous. In the 1590s, he had even sponsored a scheme of inter internal colonization or plantation, handing over the island of Lewis to a party of lowland adventurers. These men were to bring civilization and commerce to the Western Isles in a project that allowed for wholesale extermination of the local Gaelic clans. Well, geez, this sounds like uh, terrorism to me, you know. This is the same shit they do now. They create terrorist organizations, okay? This exact same thing they were doing back then, and they're still doing it. Faced with the widespread hostility of the Highland communities, the Lewis Plantation was a costly failure. The idea, however, remained fixed in the royal mind. 
the virus mind. In Ulster, unlike the Scottish Highlands, the local people had been severely demoralized. Plantation was not a new idea in Ireland, but past schemes had achieved very little. To begin with, James showed little interest in a fresh project, but for a serial series of unusual opportunities. The first involved two rather lowly, rather shady lowland, lowland opportunists, the kind of men all too attracted to the enterprising king. The same shit is going on today, my children. I mean, James Hamilton was a university don and a spy. Yeah, he was a he was a scumbag, James Hamilton. That's why none of us liked him. When I was uh, Thomas Jefferson and me and Ben Franklin and uh, James Monroe and all that, we couldn't stand this dude. Okay, we knew he was a dirtbag. A university don and a spy, Sir Hugh Montgomery, his partner was an A. Shire Laird. Together they helped Con O'Neill, an Irish chieftain, escape from Carafigus Car Castle, where he had been in prison for rioting and offered to obtain a royal pardon for him in return for a share of his. Substantial states answering, blah, blah, blah. James, originally hostile to the proposal, became the fourth partner in the enterprise, no doubt amused by the audacity of Hamilton and Montgomery. Both men proposed to bring over large parties of Scots lowlands to replace... Jeez. To replace the depopulated areas, thus reviving the hair through discredited idea of plantation. James now had a way of driving a lowland Protestant and English-speaking wedge into the heart. Lowland. What do you think they're talking about? Lowland. That's terrorist people that they send over here to kill us. It's the same shit. The same shit, my children. Okay? Oh. Nothing's changed. Okay? Nothing. The same shit that was going on way back then is still going on now, okay? Oh, no. I lost it? Are you serious? Oh, my God. Wait a minute. This might be it. Oh, uh, boy, oh, boy, oh, boy. I don't know. I lost it now. Jeez. Uh, okay, well, I don't know. I'm going to have to find it. But, yeah, you know, that's just, I mean, the same thing was going on back then, my children, and it, they're still trying to chase us around and kill us and steal all our shit. And... So you get the picture anyways, you know. I'm trying to show to the world the truth, you know, what exactly is going on. And, you know, that's why, you know, it's our, our heritage is important to me. Our true history, our true heritage. That's what we, you know, we're going to find out. When we come back, we're going to go around to all the places we live and investigate everything, see what's left, dig up all our treasures and all our relics and everything that we have hidden away and distribute wealth among the devotees, returning devotees, and all that's going to happen, okay? It's all going to happen. All right, my children, so you get the basic idea, all right? Going to be doing Ezra 6 next. Okay, my children, I love you. Hope you see my wisdom. Bye.